Um, welcome back, Mercer Locomotive. Pretty hot today, um, a little hot in the shop. We don't have air conditioning, but uh, we have fans and everything, so it's not too bad. Um, I've been in contact with uh, Mr. Pete, a.k.a. Tubal Kane, in Illinois. And uh, we've been talking back and forth, emailing and about different things. And uh, I really appreciate him. I, I have to tell you that I wish I had a man in my life like him years ago. Maybe things would have been a little different for me. Um, I guess I have some success of my own right. Uh, but um, anyway, we've been doing a lot of good things. Mercer here, uh, 3D printing, shooting waxes. We're getting set up to do lost wax castings. And um, I'm, I, uh, Mr. Pete sent me back there, he sent me some uh, fillet material, which I really appreciate. There's all kind of stuff here, wax and uh, leather and the leather, it's all different sizes, little small ones, you know, and I uh, really appreciate it because uh, it's hard to get this leather stuff without having to buy a whole load of it, and uh, uh, this is enough to last me, I guess, my son's lifetime for the amount of patterns we make. You know, we make plenty, but anyway, that goes, uh, that's very appreciated without saying, and um, I uh, want to give him something in return, and uh, what it is is uh, I notice he does all these little miniature a little oscillating engines, which I, I find interesting. And uh, if I had some time, I think I'd build a few, but um, doing all kinds of other things, and uh, maybe that's on my list way back. But um, in any event, um, in our business, we use small taps and dies now for pipes. And they are tapered pipe thread. And uh, we start at, well, 5 16 27 is the largest. Well, only one step further. We do it from 1 8 27, which is a standard 1 8 pipe. Then the next one down would be 1 16 pipe, which would be 5 16 27. And now some people in some circles have been using 40, which I'm not excited about. And then we go to quarter 40, which is this size. Then 3 16 40. And I'll very. Uh, a not very used size 532nd 48 which is an oddball but it, we, it's part of the system and then we have 1 8 which is 1 8 they're all tubing sizes by the way 1 8 56 and then I have the dies it all to match it now back there uh, gotta be 35 years ago uh, Fred Ellis from Power Models God bless him he, one, one nice man we got together and uh, he wanted to get some die sets and you had to buy them by a hundred, hundred of each size. So we worked it out, we split the order and I got 50 and he got 50 and I don't know whatever happened to his, I guess he sold them whatever, but I still had mine and occasionally I sell a set, but um, my intention was originally to make them and then sell them in a little kit or a little box like this is what I'm doing here and um, uh, sell them as a nice nice uh, kit that you could have, not just loose. But it never materialized. There's other people that sell them now, and uh, I just keep them around. And I wanted to kind of do one of my bucket list things and make the actual box. I've got, there's two more back there, and i got the third one. And what it is is going to be um, just a, a place to put the, the tops, the dies are in here, and the taps. And it's going to be, it's all mahogany. And it's going to have a little lid on it with some nice small, I've well, got little hinges somewhere. Here, here it is. It's going to go on there. Little hinge. Little hinge. See? Little hinge. And a little clasp on the front. And just to make it a little more, more interesting, I decided to put, I always put my name on everything, of course. I decided to put a little plaque on the front here. It says Mercer Locomotive Works, Trenton, New Jersey, miniature pipe and thread, miniature pipe thread tap and die set. And I'm going to make a little plate, and that's what I'm going to show you now. And then I'm going to inlay it in here. I'm going to cut the the brass out, and then very 
small screws to screw it in there. And then as a th the next thing I'm going to do is, this is the uh, legend, I guess you would, of the sizes of the threads and what drill tap drill to use. And I'm going to hollow this out on the inside, and then I'm going to get this laminated, and then have a little place to put a card in there, or I might tack it in there, but it will be laminated and be inside the, like this, in there, just like that. And then you open it up, you look at the sizes, and I thought it'd be really nice. And um, I'm going to send this to Mr. Pete as a as a uh, gesture. He sent me something. And then also what I'm going to do is I'll be right back. I'll show you what I'm going to do. And he's going to be getting this video is actually going to be on after he gets this stuff. So I'm making it now because I'm working on it, but. What I got is I was so impressed with his oil can that he made. I made one, but I made it a little differently to my style. This is, uh, if you know what this stuff is, Goya, which is the Spanish stuff. We get it right down the street here in the Spanish store. 89 cents for that. And I made the same basic thing as he did, except that my cans are a little bit smaller in diameter. And I got a little bit of a grip to them, and my hands are messed up, you know, from arthritis like a lot of older people. And, and I can grab this a little bit better. Now he made one out of this chicken can here. And um, this is pretty big, it's bigger than a tuna can. See, and I, I would either have to hold it this way or grab it this way. And if it was uh, like a little slippery, it'd fall out of my hand, guaranteed. So, uh, and that might suit him fine, but I, I decided to make mine out of these smaller cans. And uh, I'm gonna do another one. This is my can for, um, steel and then this one will be painted uh, yellow by the way these are powder coated so that the paint will not come off with the with the oil and everything it's not it's not going to come off and uh, this one uh, will be painted yellow so you have the so you can just go oh what is this no oh, i don't know this way here okay black oh that's for steel yellow okay that's for uh, aluminum simple color code so um, what i'm doing for mr pete is that this is going to be a copper etched plaque which we're going to do i'll bring it up close so you can see it and it's going to be this is just a paper version for now and it's going to be uh copper with the raised letters and then it's going to be of course the chicken sign is going to come off and it's going to be all powder coated and then this is going to go around it like that i'm going to roll it and it's going to be uh screwed to it on there like that and uh, it's just a little bit of token uh and what it is is it says Present it to commemorate, no, present it in commemoration to Tublacane for his 14 million views on YouTube. And I think that's fabulous. So I really appreciate this man. Uh, hopefully someday I'll get a chance to meet him. Uh, and I thought I'd send this to him because I thought the, the oil can idea was such a great idea because so many times I'm knocking it over. That's some of the reason. And the other thing is that... Uh, uh, chips get all in there and it gets a mess and everything and I, I checked it out you see and see I mean it had to get way over this one here is a little harder to tip but also I can grab this a little easier so that's why I, I did it with the Goya can but this one's going to be for him to match the one he's got and uh, I gotta figure out how to get the chicken out like he did he didn't show that but uh, anyway what we're going to do today is um, I'm going to show I've done them before we're going to show uh, how to make an etching and that's your plate, uh, and um, I'm going to do that, uh, the whole process again, so you can see a little bit better. I got a lot of hits on the ones I did, but uh, it was, you know, when I had my old cameras and stuff, which this is a much better camera now, so you can see a little bit better. Anyway, I'm going to put these back, and then we're going to get into doing the, uh, the etching. Okay, um, I'm going to start the etching process now, and I I want to tell you a little bit about the history of it for me. Years ago, I got the book, So You Want to Build a Steam Engine. I always thought that was a ha ha ha. And I knew Joe Nelson, and I thought it was a pretty good book, honestly. And it helped me quite a bit in the early days. And um, one of the featured locomotives and builders in there was Doug Alkier, and he built a beautiful B&O President Class Pacific, which was a, a one inch scale. 
And it had a lot of, what she mentioned in there, photo etchings. And I knew what the process was, but how do you do it? You had to have a camera, you had to make negatives. And it just was really out of the reach of other people. Now, he worked for um, Lockheed Martin or one of them places where they, he built something with the space shuttle. Well, anyway, he most likely had the cameras and everything in there. And I'm sure he went down to the camera department, the art department, said, hey, make this for me. And they did it. But uh, it's really out of the reach of the general people until a computer came along. When a computer came along, now we can do it ourselves. So and CAD. So what I've done, I made, I'm, I've done this before, you've seen it before, I have a, must have 20 different etchings on the K4. All different little pieces that I made and it was just awesome to do. And um, what I'm doing now is, uh, I made a, last night I made a, um, a negative and I'll show you the negative. Now one side of the negative material is smooth and the other side is rough. Now the rough side is what you print on so that the ink sticks to it. And you have to set your printer to the highest resolution possible. And it goes real slow, but it makes it dark. Believe it or not, if it's too light, the light will come through this and you'll get a model looking effect and it won't be right. So now this is, you see here, the one, let's see, the one on the top is backwards. And the one on the next side is frontwards. And that's the one I'm going to use because I wanted it on the shiny side. So I reprinted it in reverse. And then this one is the Mercer locomotive one here on the bottom. Now what you do with that is, uh, this is copper, copper that I that has the photo resist on it, and I'll put up on the bottom of the screen down here where to get this stuff and get the chemicals and everything else. It's a place in Chicago, believe it or not, Mr. Pete, down near you, graphics company. And uh, I'm, I'm going to take out the center just so I don't expose the whole plate and waste the whole plate. And I have to put it on an angle. If I could put it this way, I, I, it's just kind of tight to get it on there that way. And I want it to full length, so I'm gonna put it long ways in here and I have enough room to do it that way. So what you do is you put this down and you set up the way it's gonna come. It's gonna get set up like this. And and then, you, then I have a piece of glass here and I'm gonna stick the glass on top of it like that to weight it down. And then I'm gonna put this light on it just like this as close as I can to it for 10, 15 minutes. That's enough to expose it. And believe it or not, just an ordinary light. It's nothing special. And uh, you don't need no special light or anything. And that'll expose the, the, the plate. And then I'm going to take a developer and I'm going to put it on there as a, a six to one part uh, of the stuff, the one, six parts water. And you put it on there and it kind of washes it and it'll take all the um, It'll take all the um, green stuff, which is green, you'll see, and it'll leave it'll leave it'll leave the lettering. So when it leaves the lettering, then when I put that in the acid, which is going to go in this tank right here, well, the, we'll go. That's the next step. Um, that will etch the stuff out with this etching solution that I bought at the uh, Radio Shack. The only reason why I bought a Radio Shack is it's, um, I needed to get it. I had the developer. And I needed this stuff, so. This is what's ferric chloride is what this is. Okay, so uh, let me get that set up and then we'll, we'll get back. 